The General Belgrano was an Argentine Navy light cruiser that was sunk by a British nuclear submarine during the Falklands War of 1982 between Britain and Argentina. The sinking, which accounted for just over half of the Argentine casualties during the conflict, became a lightning rod for controversy. It was established that the ship had been sunk outside the British naval exclusion zone around the Falkland Islands, and critics claimed that it was therefore an illegal act. She remains the only ship to have been sunk during military operations by a nuclear-powered submarine, and the second sunk in action by any type of submarine since World War II. The Belgrano began as the USS Phoenix, built in Camden, New Jersey, and launched in 1938. Surviving the attack on Pearl Harbor, she won nine battle stars for service in World War II. Decommissioned in 1946, the ship was bought by Argentina in 1951. Originally named 17 de Octobre, a date of significance for Argentine President Juan Perón's party, the ship took part in the military coup that overthrew Perón in 1955. It was then renamed after General Belgrano, a renowned fighter for Argentine independence in the early 1800s. On the 2nd of April 1982, a struggling and unpopular Argentine military junta invaded the Falkland Islands, a British dependency long claimed by Argentina, approximately 300 miles from the Argentine mainland. The invasion was received rapturously in Buenos Aires, and the junta assumed that Britain would not bother fighting over islands that were 8,000 miles away. Instead, Britain declared a maritime exclusion zone of 200 nautical miles around the Falkland Islands, within which any Argentine warship or naval auxiliary entering might be attacked by British nuclear-powered submarines. On the 30th of April, this was upgraded to a total exclusion zone, within which any sea vessel or aircraft from any country entering the zone might be fired upon without further warning. This was justified by the British under Article 51 of the UN Charter, the right to self-defence. Its legal status was unprecedented and debatable, but it was respected by states not involved in the conflict. As it became clear that British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher was sending a task force to retake the islands, General Galtieri, leader of the Argentine junta, moved to reinforce their grip. Naval forces, including the Belgrano, took up positions around the islands. By the 29th of April, the ships were patrolling the Birdwood Bank, south of the Falklands. On the 30th of April, General Belgrano was detected by the British nuclear-powered hunter-killer submarine Conqueror. The submarine approached over the following day. On the 1st of May, 1982, Admiral Juan Lombardo ordered all Argentine naval units to seek out the British task force around the Falklands and launch a, quote, massive attack the following day. General Belgrano, which was outside and to the southwest of the exclusion zone, was ordered southeast. Lombardo's signal was intercepted by British intelligence. Thatcher and her war cabinet, meeting at Checkers the following day, agreed to a request from Admiral Terence Lewin, the Chief of Defence Staff, to alter the rules of engagement and allow an attack on General Belgrano outside the exclusion zone. The British decided that the Argentine ships were a threat. After consultation at cabinet level, Thatcher ordered Conqueror to attack General Belgrano. There's lots more to come in this video, but please consider liking, subscribing to the channel, and sharing. And please consider supporting my work with a PayPal donation. The link is in the description. Thank you. Three torpedoes were fired at 1557 local time. Two struck the ship 
on areas unprotected by armor plating, causing catastrophic damage. The explosion aft killed up to 275 men, striking a mess in relaxation area. The ship filled with smoke and lost electrical power, so no distress signal could be sent. The ship began to list to port and to sink towards the bow. 20 minutes after the attack, at 1624, Captain Bonzo ordered the crew to abandon ship. Inflatable life rafts were deployed, and the evacuation began without panic. Two escort ships with the Belgrano were unaware of the attack, due to poor weather conditions and visibility. Though the crew of Bouchard felt an impact from the third torpedo that missed the Belgrano. By the time they realized something was wrong, it was dark and the life rafts were scattered. Argentine and Chilean ships rescued 772 men in all from the 3rd to the 5th of May. In total, 323 were killed in the attack, 321 members of the crew and two civilians who were on board at the time. The loss of the Belgrano was a crushing blow. The Argentine Navy had little choice but to return to base. They were at the mercy of the British submarines. The British now had sea supremacy, and Argentine jets were forced to operate from the limits of their range, with aircraft carriers returned to the mainland. The sinking was immediately controversial. The junta denounced it as a treacherous act of armed aggression. British opponents of Thatcher in the war, of which there were many, echoed this criticism. In May 1983, Thatcher received a rough ride on a TV debate program, which appeared to be a coordinated ambush on her by the BBC. A 1985 leak of secret documents by a civil servant to Labour MP Tam D.L., confirmed that the Belgrano was sailing away from the islands when struck. Whilst this appeared to vindicate the critics, it wasn't as simple as that. A message passed via the Swiss Embassy in Buenos Aires to the Argentine government nine days before the sinking made clear that the UK no longer considered the 200-mile exclusion zone as the limit of its military action. Argentine Rear Admiral Alara who was in charge of the task force, of which General Belgrano was part, said, After that message of 23rd of April, the entire South Atlantic was an operational theatre for both sides. We as professionals said it was just too bad that we lost the Belgrano. In August 1994, an official Argentine Defence Ministry report, written by Armed Forces Auditor Eugenio Miari, was released which described the sinking of General Belgrano as, quote, a legal act of war. In 2003, the captain of the Belgrano, Hector Bonzo, confirmed that General Belgrano had actually been manoeuvring or zigzagging and not sailing away from the exclusion zone. Bonzo stated that any suggestion that HMS Conqueror's actions were a betrayal was wrong and that the submarine carried out its duties according to the accepted rules of war. Bonzo added that he was not angry about the attack on the ship, and that the limit did not exclude danger or risks, it was all the same in or out. I would like to be quite precise that, as far as I was concerned, the 200-mile limit was valid until the 1st of May, that is, while diplomatic negotiations were taking place, and or until a real act of war took place, and that had happened on the 1st of May. Many Argentine veterans described the sinking as a war crime and brought an unsuccessful legal action against the British government. And in 2012, Argentine President Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner also referred to the sinking of the General Belgrano as a war crime. However it is, and remains, the official position of the Argentine Navy that the sinking of the Belgrano was a legal act of war and that the ship was proceeding to attack the British task force. Margaret Thatcher was never a unifying figure 
and it is easy to jump to the conclusion that there was something nefarious about the sinking of the Belgrano. Setting aside her, and the conflict itself, it is perhaps far more instructive to listen to the losing side. In the end, the sinking was yet another tragic loss of life in war, of which there have been far too many in our lifetimes.